Mount Sinai. At age 40, Moses killed the Egyptian and was forced to flee for his life. Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Older maps will reveal that Midian is in northwest Saudi Arabia. This is where we should find the mountain of God today. Moses was tending sheep when he encountered a mysterious burning bush that was not being consumed. The Lord said to Moses, When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Paul, in the New Testament, told us the location of Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai in Arabia. Josephus told us Mount Sinai is the highest of mountains in the region of the city of Median. This is our destination, the real Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, and is named today Jebel al-Laz. Herschel Shanks, editor of the Biblical Archaeology Review, stated, Jebel el-Laz is the most likely site for Mount Sinai. From the Saudi shore at the Gulf of Aqaba, we first inspect the remains of the pillar that once had Hebrew inscriptions on it, but was removed by the Saudis after Ron Wyatt showed it to the authorities. Today, a Red Sea coastal survey plate marks the location of the column. Our first destination is Elam, where the children of Israel would find water to drink. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees so they camped there by the waters. Using Google Earth, we are able to zoom in to the location of Elam. It stands out with all the green palm trees grouped together in the canyon or wadi. On the ground, we can see the circular wells still in operation today. Of course, there are more than 70 palm trees here today. But amazingly, 12 wells are still here at Elam. The children of Israel would have been stretched out through the canyons here for a great distance, but they would have access to the drinking water at these wells. And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. Next, the children of Israel traveled through the wilderness of Sin and murmured against Moses. The Lord lovingly provided them with manna every day, except the Sabbath. On a detailed map next to the town of Al-Bad, or ancient Median, we can see Mugair Shu'ayab, meaning the caves of Jethro. Here we see the name Jethro listed on the map. The facades of these caves were carved by the Navidians in more recent times, 2,000 years ago. But the inner caves themselves date back to the time of the Exodus and Jethro, 3,500 years ago. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. Northwest of Jebel el Laws is the rock of Horeb that we will explore next. Standing on the crest of a hill, the singular rock stands 50 feet tall and can easily be seen from a great distance. As the people complained once again, asking for water, the Lord heard their cries, and he commanded Moses to strike the rock. Then, water gushed out in abundance. The rock was split down the middle, from top to bottom, by the hand of God.
erosion can be seen around the rock from millions of gallons of water flowing out into the nearby camp. He opened the rock and water flowed out. The fissure is so large, one can walk through the split in the rock. The rocks below show clear signs of water erosion. And Moses built an altar and called its name the Lord is my banner. Here in the encampment is a large square altar assembled with uncut stones and was built after the defeat of the Amalekites. Also in the encampment are the remains of these circular formations of stone used around the base of their tents. This is clear evidence of prior occupation at this site. Our next destination is Jebel el Oz, or Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. As we pan across the mountains, we see the peak of Mount Sinai that was burned by the presence of God. The blackened peak of Mount Sinai marks the location where the mountain was on fire. Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. To the right of the peak is the location of Elijah's cave. It is extremely rare for anyone to obtain video of the mountain, since entering Saudi Arabia is very difficult, and they are guarding this mountain from those who would photograph it. Near the base of the mountain are the guardhouse and fence, which surround the area where many artifacts are located that help to authenticate the site. This Saudi sign states, Archaeological area, warning, unlawful to trespass. Violators are subject to penalties passed by royal decree. Using Google Earth, one can zoom in and see the guardhouse and fence, which are next to the sign. In the encampment area are many inscriptions, including this wonderful image of a menorah, which is undoubtedly the oldest ever found. Also found in the encampment was this broken millstone, that would have ground up the manna that was collected. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Google Earth shows us the altar at the base of the mountain with an animal pin next to it that would have held animals to be sacrificed. Here we can see an entrance into the animal pen. The remains of pillars are in this area also. Some pillars are white in color, while others have more of a granite appearance and are very large in diameter, as we can see here. From this same area, one can look upward and see the burned and blackened peak. The rock has literally been burned from the intense heat. When Moses was on the mountain with God, a golden calf was built in the camp by a rebellious group. As Moses was descending the mountain, he saw the people dancing around the golden calf. Here we can see the encampment from the mountain and the location of the altar for the golden calf. Using Google Earth, we can zoom in on the large boulders which comprise the base of the altar. On the ground, 
we can see the massive large boulders and the fence erected by the Saudi authorities in an effort to preserve this site. Again, we have the government sign warning visitors to keep out. It was on top of these large boulders that the golden calf was placed. 11 of the 12 tribes, save the tribe of Levi, danced around the golden calf in rebellion to God. Panning from Mount Sinai, we peer through the fence and see amazing images that are inscribed on the rocks. Egyptian-style figures of the Egyptian god Hathor have been placed here like graffiti. The bull was placed in high esteem in Egypt, where the children of Israel had just left. So they created images that came natural to their rebellious heart. These images were inscribed here because the golden calf was resting here at the time. These inscriptions are unique to Saudi Arabia, according to a Saudi archaeologist. Mount Sinai was first discovered in 1984 by Ron Wyatt and his sons, who walked across the border into Saudi Arabia without a visa in order to document the evidence here. After seeing the mountain, he and his sons were captured and were accused of espionage. They spent 78 days in prison, awaiting execution before they were finally released. Here, they were interviewed by CBS television. Jesus is the Lamb of God, the sacrifice offered up under the New Covenant to atone for our sins.